Hi, it's Tiffany with Hope, Joy, and Christ. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to become a strong prayer warrior and why. Um, we're going to start with the why, okay? Because we have such busy lives. And honestly, prayer is not always at the top of our priority list, right? And, and it should be, okay? We know good Christian people that we should pray. Um, but just starting to pray is a challenge, let alone becoming a prayer warrior. And the enemy wins when we give in to the busy and we don't fight for this part of our spiritual discipline, this part of our identity as children of God, prayer warrior. I believe that that is meant to be true of every single believer who walks in the light of God. And let me tell you why. So we see life all around us, right? So I am a stay-at-home mom. I have got two kids. I nanny two kids. I love having the neighborhood kids around. Um, I am married to an amazing man who goes out, who works every day to help provide for our family. I run a ministry online, um, helping women begin to mature in their faith, um, some men too, which is so much fun. Um, and working with wives who really want to become a godly wife, even if they're the only ones fighting for their marriage, right? That's kind of my identity. That's what I see in my day in, day out, right? I'm homeschooling my kids, right? And so I am teaching lessons. I am teaching kids how to read, how to do math. We're learning about all the star systems right now um, and randomly bugs because my little man, nine years old, loves, you know, all things bug related. Um, we're learning about how to diagram sentences. Like that's my kind of every day in the midst of things. And then you throw in washing dishes and keeping laundry up, taking care of um, social media things for an online ministry and writing content, finding time to sit and listen to my husband as he talks about his day and to appreciate him and affirm him and respect him and then serving within our church, taking the kids to different sporting things, working out things that are within our homeschool co-op, um, meeting our neighbors and trying to share the love of God with them and struggling, right? It is a challenge some days in that. Um, to really show his love in the midst of all of those things. And then getting groceries and finding time to relax and have entertainment. And there are some days I just fall into the bed completely exhausted of all the things, right? All the while, the Bible tells us, um, we see this picture of something going on behind the scenes of what is our reality of what we see um, the struggle with kids, the struggle with marriages, the struggle in our workplace. Oh my goodness, before kids, I was privileged to manage a call center and to work in that environment day in and day out. And the drama that would unfold there as coworkers would get into it or as customers on the other end would be so hurtful. And, and just like the chaos of driving to work and trying to find time to go to the gym and eat healthy and like the busyness of our lives is in the forefront of our minds every day. But okay. So in the book of Daniel chapter 10, right? Daniel has just been reading and has realized that something in scripture says there will be this specific time period um, of their captivity, a specific time period, possibly for some other things. And he's troubled and he begins to pray and ask the Lord to explain what is he, what is he seeing? Is he supposed to do something about this? What should they be doing? And in chapter 10, um, starting in verse 10, right? We see an angel has come to answer Daniel directly, right? Daniel's a prayer warrior. Like this is a man who like you want to imitate some of what he's done as he's been fasting and standing up for the Lord in this horrible culture that doesn't value our God, right? Many gods. And, and he, he is um, now meeting face to face with an angel who says to him, don't fear, right? From the first day that you set your heart to understand this, right? As you began to pray and humble yourself before God, 
your words were heard. And let me just pause a moment. The God of the universe, the God who created everything we see here, he hears our prayers. How humbling is that? How beautiful and amazing is that? How much does that set Christianity apart from every other world religion system where you have to work hard and God is unattainable and unreachable? That is not who our God is. Our God hears our words when we pray. Squirrel, total squirrel, but beautiful, right? You can't miss that. And he says, right from the first day, your words were heard. And I came because of your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me, stood against me for 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes or angels came to help me for I had been left alone there with the Kings of Persia. Now I've come to help you understand right for this vision. And so for a few verses, we get this picture, right? This veil is pulled back and we see that our prayers reach God's ears and he is sending answers sometimes through angels. How cool is that? Not to get distracted, right? Um, Because the Bible warns us about getting distracted and looking into things of that realm, that that can really pull our attention from focusing on God, the creator, by focusing on the created But regardless, he heard and he sent an answer to Daniel. But the kings of Persia, who we understand to be fallen angels, who followed the devil as he left the rule of heaven, they stopped these angels. They're withstanding him. They're fighting. There is some kind of a battle happening between one angel and many fallen angels. So much so God wanted this message to get to Daniel that he had to send Michael, who is a chief prince, right? Big shot angel to come down to release this angel to come and to speak with him. And so the dynamics of that are not important. What is important is to see, first of all, that our prayers affect the things of God, the things of the kingdom of God, and the things in a spiritual realm that we cannot see, right? Who has ever seen a fallen angel, prince of Persia, fighting against a mighty warrior angel of God? Those aren't things that we see in our physical eyes. What we do see all around us are leaders who maybe are corrupt and fighting to do things against godly opposition. And so we see those pieces here kind of on the surface, but peeling back the surface, there are things happening. There is spiritual warfare happening in the spiritual realm all around us, some kind of way that we can't see. We can't see it. It kind of scares me silly if I sit and think about it for too long that there are demons, if you will, um, kings of this world, right, who've been given power and authority over, right, the princes of the air. He talks about them in um, Ephesians chapter six. And some of what we see, right, as he talks about in Ephesians chapter six, right, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness of this world, and we can't see them. They can see us apparently and hear us and watch to see how they can best target us, which is kind of a relief um, in some ways to know that because sometimes I'm like, I'm such a mess. I fail. I fall flat on my face in the same area of temptation over and over and over again. Why? I'm working so hard to get out of that, to develop the spiritual maturity, to not fall into the same pit of sin because the enemy has seen and sees where there is a weakness in me, right? He's watching. They are watching. Okay. So the point is, why do we need to make prayer and becoming a prayer warrior a priority in our list? Why should that be like at the top of our priority list? Because there is a real enemy. There's a real enemy who is fighting a real battle, a kingdom of God level battle that is bigger than my kids squabbling because they want to learn about stars instead of bugs. That's bigger than me and my husband arguing about financial struggles. That's bigger than managing drama within the workroom. That's bigger than disagreements with neighbors over 
whatever we might disagree about. There's so many things. And, and so there are things that we see that are going on. And every once in a while, we might mention a prayer, God, my neighbor is lost. Please save her. God, this is so hard. Please help me. <clears throat> but there is real warfare going on behind the scenes in each and every one of those situations, driving us to be distracted by fighting each other, driving us to be distracted by the busyness of the life that we are living, getting our minds not fixed on him, right? Distracted here. And God has called us to fight, to be Christian soldiers. There's an old hymn, right? Onward Christian soldiers marching on to battle. And that is what we are called to be, right? Heirs in the kingdom of God. And if we think about Jesus Christ and his life, how he lived it here, right? He did not allow himself to become distracted from his mission, right? He took time to get alone by himself with the Lord. He was in prayer continually. He turned down so many amazing opportunities to do so many amazing things because he knew what his mission was. We have a mission. We are called to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that God has commanded and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That is our mission. We have been sent here to do that. And yet I get distracted in raising my kids with a biblical worldview. I get distracted in making sure that my home is nice and, and ready to offer hospitality where needed. I get distracted and wanting to make sure that our marriage is thriving and happy and successful. And I get distracted and serving in a ministry and working on things that maybe are not the main thing, right? We get distracted so easily. And that is a strategy of the enemy. When we are distracted and focused on our own thing, right? The smaller circle that we are within, we miss the bigger circle. We miss the opportunities to pray for the lost. We miss the opportunities to pray over our friends who are missionaries, over what God is doing in different parts of the world, over our leaders within our nation. You think about thousands of years ago as Daniel is praying and there is a demonic prince influencing the kings of Persia, the leaders and rulers of that world. There are are the same things happening today. No doubt. If it worked thousands of years ago, the enemy did not change his successful strategy. And so we think about all of these leaders that we have beef with, all of these rules and laws that are happening where we are arguing and bickering with each other about what we believe about them. All the while, there's an enemy attacking the mind and influencing the decisions and actions of the leaders in our world. We are so distracted right here, fighting against flesh and blood. They were missing the opportunity to be on our knees, prayer warriors in the midst of spiritual warfare, where our words affect what happens in the heavenly realms, where our words could be the difference as we are praying and crying out to the Lord that are allowing him to hear those prayers that for whatever reason, right? Our prayers have weight and matter in that realm. We can be praying over our leaders, over their minds, for their salvation is what they need to begin with. And that they would hear the voice of God and follow after his will and his way and be leading and moving in a way that honors and pleases the Lord rather than giving in to the influences of the princes of the air, the principalities who are influencing their minds. Why focus on learning how to be a spiritual warrior? Because there's a real battle happening with a kingdom impact where lives are being lost. People are dying and going to hell every day while I am fighting with my husband over spending too much at Sam's. Honestly. So why focus on it? Because there's a real battle and we need prayer warriors. Prayer warriors are needed. We need soldiers who will rise up and fight the real battle that's happening all around us. Now, how do you do that? That one is such a simple answer. Pray. Just pray. Set aside a time every day where you are going to pray, where you are going to focus, however that looks for you. Okay. Now I cannot just sit in my chair and work through a list mentally, because then all of a sudden I'm making a grocery list or I'm thinking through all of the drama, right? I'm so easily distracted. And so 
I say in, in the article, so I've got an article that will give you four, five, six, 10 different ways to do this, right? I'll have a link to it in the description, but I say cheat, cheat. Oh my goodness, cheat. Who cares, right? Make a list, read from the list. Find some scripture that talks about the things that you're praying about. Sign up for some prayer guides. I have several that are in the free library of resources within the Hope Join Christ community. If you follow the link in the description, sign up to be part of the community, you will have those prayer guides. One that work, walks you through an acronym, HEARTS, so H-E-A-R-T-S, six letters to pray through, praying over the hearts and minds of whomever you're genuinely praying about, praying that their ears would be open, that their eyes would be open, that they would be ready to have transformation, that they would be free from sin and scriptures to go with that. And then samples of how to pray it out, cheat, pray something that's already written out to let it begin your time. And as you begin to have practice, right? Just like a soldier, right? We're talking about being a spiritual warrior. This is a soldier in the kingdom of God. A soldier goes to basic training. A soldier practices their skills. Who says that Christianity has to be any different? Write it out, practice it. Um, some ones that I love praying intentionally over my kids, over my husband are Stromio Martin's um, The Power of a Praying Wife. Um, the power of a praying parent. She has prayers written out with scripture. I have been praying through those prayers for years, so much so that as I start into them now, then I kind of go off on my own in the different areas. She talks about, you know, praying for this and maybe this next thing doesn't actually apply. And so I add in different things, but I can do that because I've been doing it for years, practicing, cheating, copying. God doesn't care. He cares about your heart. This doesn't have to be some original, beautiful masterpiece. This can start out following the example of others, which is exactly what discipleship is, following the example of Christ. There are prayers in the scripture. Pick it up, open it up, or read some of those prayers within Daniel, the book we just talked about. There are prayers there. Read through them. Allow that to get you started praying, confessing the sins in your life, in your family, in our nation, begging God to come and intervene in a real and powerful and mighty way to become a spiritual warrior. You don't need to dress a certain way. You don't have to have it all figured out. I fall short every day. There's nothing perfect about the person on this side of the screen, just like there's nothing perfect about you. God does not care about perfection. He cares about us staying in the process with him, confessing our sin and keeping that confessed up, being right in the relationships with those around us, as much as it depends on us, right? To make peace with those around us and then being consistent to meet with him every day, every day, just to meet with him, write out the things um, within the Hope Join Christ shop, I have given you a link to a prayer journal. Just print it out, separate your list out, make a list for Monday, a list for Tuesday, a list for Wednesday. If you have five minutes or 10 minutes, work through it. Just put a little dot next to each thing that you got to. And guess what? Next Monday, pick up at the point of the next dot. You'll get through it at some point. Just be intentional to go to war and prayer. The last piece I want to talk about, about how to be a prayer warrior is a little different um, and may feel very intimidating. I want to encourage you to press into this. Praying with other people. The Bible talks about that where two or more gather together in his name, he is there in their midst. That is never felt more so than in the midst of prayer. Um, in our church, we have a women's prayer meeting. And if you look around, you can find some in your area as well. I have learned more about prayer from just sitting in the room with some of these women who are fierce prayer warriors who have been praying their whole lives long for some things who God has moved when they begin to pray. Like, I mean, I just get chills up and down my arms because I can feel the presence of God entering the room. And I have learned so much about prayer through that. And initially I was afraid to pray out loud. And that has changed completely because there is no shame or guilt from this group. Find a safe group of people to pray with. And you know what? If there's not one, start one. 
invite some people into your home once a week or once a month and pray together over the real things in your life, in your family, in your church, in your community, in your, in your nation. Corporate prayer does something beautiful for intercessory prayer. And I cannot advocate for it enough. The fact is anyone can do this. Anyone can do this. You can set aside five minutes every morning and begin to meet with the Lord. Write out your prayers. Get a prayer guide. You can find free prayer guides. You can find books that have prayer guides in them and just start praying. Make sure you set aside some time within that to listen to what he would say because we can talk to him and that affects great change. He will also talk to you. And that is the most beautiful thing ever to hear his voice. I crave that. I long to hear his voice speak to me about things, to tell me what is the next step, to shine his light on areas he'd like me to work on, things that I need to change and give up. The convicting word of the Lord is just as beautiful as the encouraging word of the Lord. Don't be afraid of that. Okay, listen, I'm just going to pray over us as you go out from this moment to become a strong prayer warrior, someone who can fight the real battles, who's not distracted by the fake battles all around you. Father God, thank you so much just that you allow us relationship with you, that you sent your son to make that possible. Lord, you are so loving and so compassionate. Thank you that you hear us when we pray. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of this battle that's happening for the souls of mankind. Lord, I pray for each and every person who is watching this, that you would show them where they have time or show them how to carve out time, that you would encourage them and help them to build momentum. Lord, help them to hear your voice as they're praying. Protect them from the attacks of the enemy against their mind, against their thoughts, Lord, against bringing in anxiety. Lord, and surround them in a community of believers that will pray, that will be like-minded and pursuing you wholeheartedly, surrendered to you fully. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all these things. And it is in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. All right. I will see you next time. Until then, have a blessed day.